So when we evaluated those polynomials at x values, we plugged in an x and we got out a y. We have a coordinate point and we could plot that on a, on a plane, on a graph, and see where that polynomial hits at that specific x value. But we, not, we might not know how it behaves around that point, if it's a curvy polynomial or if it's a straight one or if it's a constant line up or down horizontally or vertically. So we want to look at some of those cases. But similar story, regardless of the polynomial, we can look at the graph and tell of the equation in some cases and tell of where those points are happening at. So you have this graph given to you and we want to use it to evaluate the polynomial when x is equal to 3. So we've dealt with these cases. It's linear. We can actually determine the equation of the line. But first, before we do that, we can always double check with it. Let's see, what is the polynomial's value when x is equal to 3? So these are my x's, these are my y's. At x equal to 3, if I travel up to my polynomial where it's hitting on that line, and travel over to the y's, where is it happening at? So what point do we get at 3? What is our y coordinate? What is our output at 3? 1, 2, 3, 4. So if we had the definition of the polynomial, we could plug in 3, double check that we get out 4. And let's do that. So what is the equation of the line? We need it in that form, y equals mx plus b. Well, that's just one of them. And do we have that information? Let's figure it out. Where is the y-intercept happening? So where is it crossing the y-axis? 0, negative 2. So I have that b value. And what is my slope? If I start from one point, I need to go up 2 over 1 to hit another point. Up 2 over 1. So my slope is 2. So the equation of the line, y equals 2x minus 2. So let's evaluate, double check, at 3, do I get out 4? So we'll plug in and verify that this point is actually on our line. So 4 was my y value. Is it true that when I plug in 3 for x, I get out 4 for y? So what are we looking at? 6 minus 2 is definitely equal to 4. Makes it true. Okay, and if we didn't know the y coordinate, again, we could plug in x and get out y. Figure out that it's equal to 4. So using that same graph, evaluate that polynomial when x is equal to 4 and x is equal to 2. So move away from the definition. This is just our check. From the graph, what are the values of y when x is 4 and x is 2? So what are you thinking? When x is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, I travel up to my line, over to the y axis, and I'm looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so that point is on my line. It's a solution to the thing. If I plug in 4 into my equation, I get out 6 for y. And for 2, when we plug in 2 into our polynomial equation, what do we get out for? y. 2. And again, we could plug those in and double check, but we can look off the picture if we have nice grids that's helpful and tell the values of that polynomial. So in a sports league of x teams, in which each team plays every other team twice, we don't care about that, the total number of games n to be played is given by the polynomial equation n is equal to x squared minus x a polynomial, since all of the variables are up top, passes that test. A women's slow pitch softball league has 10 teams, and each team plays every other team twice. So it follows this model. What is the total number of games played? So in our polynomial, let's just break down the pieces again. What did x represent? That variable talked about the number of teams. And then n, the output, was number of games to be played. So it's helpful to know which piece of information goes to which variable. Because, in this case, we have the number of teams, we have x, and we need to figure out 
n, total number of games played. So we'll plug it in. I know that x is equal to 10, so if I plug that into my equation, trying to figure out the number of games, n is going to be equal to 10 squared minus 10. It's helpful. Whenever you see an x, put parentheses around it so you don't make mistakes. So what are you looking at? 10 times 10 is 100. We're subtracting off 10. So I've got 90. And we can put units on there. 90 games they're going to have to play. All right. So for you, determine the total number of games, n, to be played in a league of 12 teams in which each team plays every other team twice. So it still fits this model. Go ahead and evaluate. So what does that mean? x is equivalent to 12 that number of teams, and how many games are going to be played. So n is going to be 12 squared minus 12. So 12 times 12 is 144, and if we take away 12, we're looking at 132 games to be played.